Okay, welcome to episode 4 of my 3DS Max tutorial. Uh, from here on, actually after this one, I'm going to be doing things a little differently. I'm going to be going into more specific videos of whatever people request. Um, I've been getting some feedback saying that you know, there's plenty of beginner tutorials, but there's certain things I would like to know that I don't see covered in a lot of these tutorial videos. So from now on, I'm just going to go over specific things. Uh, for example, there was someone on Reddit the other day who was having trouble with footing geometry, and he said he didn't know how to do Boolean cuts into objects. So, for example, I'd just say, I don't know how to do Boolean, make a video on that, and I'd just go over all the options of, you know, Boolean, pro-Boolean, what the difference is. Uh, so, if anyone has any ideas for any videos like that that they'd like to see, uh, comment either here on YouTube or preferably on Reddit. That is mostly where I check a lot. Um, so yeah. Anyways, in this video, what I'm going to be going over is making an inevitable poly and just kind of going over some of the options real quick. I'm not going to go into anything really detailed for this one since I kind of already stated that I'm going to be making more detailed videos later on specific things. But you have two ways to do this. You can either right click on the object, go down to convert to, edible poly, or under the materials, or modify section, modifier list, edible poly. Both works the same way. Let me turn on edged faces here. Um, you have several ways that you can manipulate this object. You have your vertex like the little points on the corner of the box. You have uh, edges, uh, borders, not really applicable on this object, polygons, and then you have your whole object. Um, let's start with vertex here. Got these little corners here and be aware that you can modify all the stuff exactly with the exact same options as you could with the whole object. So you know, want to mess with these, you can squish them around however, you know, start trying to like rough out a shape that you are trying to achieve um, and then you have some of these little options down here that will start getting into a lot more detailed things. I'm not going to be going into a lot of them but you know, be aware that these are here, play with them, kind of figure out what they do for themselves. I'll be going over like the most common ones. Um, you have the name, which is a button, which is fine if you already have the option set, but if you don't, you want to click this little like, black box to the side that says Settings, and it'll bring up a little floating menu. You can click on the name and drag it around wherever if it's in the way. And then you'll see here, extend out the height of that vertex, extend out the width, and then, well, hey, I got like a box unicorn here. Three little buttons down there, OK, apply and continue, which would just kind of mean I could just keep going on, applying the same thing out, and then cancel. Bloop, back to normal. Um, chamfer, per vertex, I mean, that, that doesn't really matter. Um, that one actually works best in edge mode, which edge mode, you see, does exactly what you think. You can select these little edges here extrude kind of work exactly as before chamfer now a lot of people when they're making things uh, are wondering like why, why does this look so unrealistic it's because nothing has a perfect edge like this in real life except maybe like a really sharp knife or something or broken glass or you know something like that so what this does is this puts polygon thing on that side don't I uh, this will break up your edge and I'd say probably like, like about three segments is fine I mean you don't need it like really big like that but just enough to just create a very slight softness to that it can go a long way in just making your object look a lot more realistic so you know be aware that that's there um, bridge that's nice if you're doing, if you're editing things, say like uh, you're, 
making this a chest of drawers here. I mean, you don't need a lot of detail on that side, but you wanted to delete that face. And then you needed another one back here. Select that edge, this edge. You can bring up your bridge, and I'll put a cap over this. And over here, you have your segments. And you can just chop that up. Um, and be like, yay, now I have a bunch of drawers. Or, you know, whatever you wanted to do with that. Uh, border, as I said, that's not really applicable here. But, I don't know, you get the idea. It's kind of like edge. Um, polygon. This just kind of does what you mean. It selects each one of these faces, these polygons. Looks the same as before. You got extrude, um, bevel, uh, inset. So it's kind of pull in like that. Sort of like the first stage of like a bevel. So then you could like do some do some more bevel fine tuning, um, bridge of course. Uh, There's one thing I haven't t touched on yet though is that I have only ever had one side selected. Say if I had two se sides selected and then you extrude, it'll come out like this. Now this is what this little top option bit here is for. You got your group normals, local normals, and by polygon. This is group, this is local, and this is by polygon. And you can see each one of those really wildly affects how it's going to come out. Um, let's see something else here that you should be aware of. Um, down here, smoothing groups. Now, if you're getting like weird shading or weird geometry after you're smoothing everything out, uh, just see what the smoothing groups are. You know, try and put things. See, these ones are in two different groups. Put them both in one, for example. And uh, it, it's generally best to have certain clusters of things and smoothing groups together um, for whatever effect you're looking at. But if you, but if you're getting like weird distortions or shadowing, uh, check the smoothing groups. Uh, additionally, sometimes people will do a lot of heavy editing of something, then they'll render it out, and something will really look funky. Uh, check to make sure that the side didn't somehow get flipped, because as you can see here, that will really affect the look of an object. Um, I guess that's really it for now. Like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with these. If, if there's anything specifically you want, to go into a lot of detail on. Oh, you got the last one here. It sucks the whole object. Um, if there's anything you really want detail on, like I said, comment, let me know. Uh, but for now, I guess that's it. I mean, you got a handle on this. Go through, play with it, you know, have fun. See ya.